What's going on guys, my name is Kyle and welcome back. Yesterday we got some car parts in the mail and I am so excited to get this on the car so let me show you what we got. I've been wanting to grab something like this for quite a while but I've just been waiting for the right time and apparently the time is now. So what I purchased for our beautiful project car is a short shifter. I know it probably doesn't look like it from the, it's probably hard to tell. It, it looks, it's difficult to tell. It's a short shifter for the Lancer. <laughs> there's a couple of reasons why I didn't buy this earlier. The first one being is the original shifter isn't broken. It's not like there's anything wrong with it. It still works perfectly fine. This just will hopefully work better. The second reason is I don't want to take the gear selector apart and not be able to put it back together because that's how you change gears in a manual vehicle. And if I don't have that, we won't be going very far. <laughs> it's not that I don't think I can do it, but there's always this level of doubt that with something like this, I want to make sure I'm comfortable. Now, I know that there's a million videos out there about how to install a short shifter. I understand that, all right? A lot of them know how to do it. Big difference here is I don't. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. So please don't use this as instructions because I have no idea. So the plan today falls onto two different things. The first one, don't break the car, which I hope is pretty obvious, but I've made a lot of mistakes in my project car journey already. So I'm gonna try my best to make that a rule. The second thing on our list is taking out the old shifter and putting in a new one. I don't know if you thought this was gonna be a long list, but it's not, that's it. Don't break the car and change the shifter. Uh, what, I don't know what else you want from me. So in true short shifter video fashion, I think the first thing we do is measure how much of a throw we have with the stock shifter, and then we can compare it to the short shifter to make sure it is actually shorter than the stock shifter. <laughs> I know there's been a lot of obvious points in this video so far. I think I'm just procrastinating having to take the shifter apart because I'm a little nervous, all right? Don't roast me for it. Let's just jump in the car and measure the old shifter. Okay, so to do the measurements, I think we're gonna go from third into fourth, just a straight line down the middle. I think that makes the most sense. But what I'm gonna do is try and keep the tape measure in exactly the same position for both of the tests. So we'll start it at the top of the, uh, the gear stick for third gear. So I'm just gonna bring the tape measure out a little bit. And I'm gonna rest it on the back of the console just to make sure it's the same distance for both of the tests. Okay, so we've got one centimeter right there. Let's bring it down to neutral. God, that's a lot. Down to fourth, we've got 14 centimeters. So from the tip to here, we've got 14 centimeters of throw. So with any luck, when we put our short shifter on the, uh, on the car, we have less than 14 centimeters. I don't know if that'll actually be the case, but I don't imagine why it wouldn't be. I think that's just the nerves talking. So at least we know that this one sits at 14 centimeters. So I think what we're gonna do is take all this apart, have a look at the gear selector itself, and just try our best to work out what we need to do, because I, I honestly have no idea. Okay, so here's the plan. Now I know that this is probably overkill, and I know that half of you will probably roast me for this, but I'm gonna take out the two front seats and most of the interior components that are gonna be covering the gear selector. The reason that I'm gonna do this is not only will it make it a hell of a lot easier to get in there and see what's going on, but the main reason I wanna take the front seats out is because I wanna film it. I want you guys to see what it is we're actually doing. And if something goes wrong, at least I'll have some footage of how I broke it so I can try my best to fix it. It's smart. <laughs> so you guys can just sit back, relax. I'll do all the hard work. Just enjoy this time lapse of me trying to remove everything from the car. <laughs> Okay, so both front seats are out. All of the interior components that surround the shifter, they're all gone. I think the next thing we should do is open up the new shifter, see what it actually comes with, and then have a look at the stock shifter and make sure that it's all there and it should work. The last thing that I wanna do is take apart the old shifter and not have all of the parts to finish today's job. So let's have a look at what the new stuff came with and we'll go from there. Okay, so like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing and I'm not 100% sure of everything that I need to do this today. So I wanna open this up and lay it all out to make sure exactly what physically comes with this parcel. And then we have a look at the old one and just, I don't know, just make sure. I think in my head that seems to work. Whether it'll actually work like that or not, I'm not 100% sure, but I would rather just at least try and cover my bases before we take apart any of the old stuff. So essentially this is what the new shifter looks like. I'm just gonna clip this on there. So this top part seems to move. So I think that this is like an adjustable counterweight potentially. And I can see that there's a screw in here. So this part might be adjustable as well. I have absolutely no idea. Here we have some snap rings and some tiny screws with some washers. And then here we have some spacers. 
potentially. Look, I have no idea. This, this whole thing didn't come with any instructions and a lot of things that I read online, people seem to know exactly what they have to do. So either that's gonna mean it's a lot easier than I think it will be or um, everyone knows stuff that I don't. So <laughs> let's have a look at the old one and see what it looks like. Okay, let's have a look at the old setup. So this is what the old shifter looks like. Now I've never really looked into how this works and what the mechanism looks like, but from what I can see, it kind of looks straightforward. So when you have your left and right movements, this is what the internal mechanism looks like. We've got a cotter pin that holds this section on, and I think that's what controls left and right. I have no idea. I said it looked really simple. Um, turns out I lied, but at least you can get a really good idea as to what's happening internally with that gear selector. So I think what I need to do is undo this bolt and nut assembly on this side, and then there's another bolt here on this side, and that kind of looks like it'll just come off, I guess. I have no real idea. I can see that one of the bushings are here, and the other one sits just down here in this little acrylic or plastic cup underneath there and that'll do the side to side motion to select from second to third to fifth whatever any sort of sideways motion you need to do when getting through the gears so i think what we'll do is i'm actually going to grab the new shifter and we'll just sort of hold them side by side to see what the orientation is going to be like and then i don't know we'll just go from there i think so now with having the old one open and having a look at the new one you can see that the orientation actually sits like this and i have no idea why but i assumed it was like this or like this I did not expect it to be this way. Maybe that's just me being stupid, but at least now we know. And I mean, holding them side by side, it kind of looks straightforward, but I feel like that's a trap and I feel like it's not gonna be as easy as I think it is. So I think what I'm gonna do is take out this cotter pin here. I'll undo these two side parts here and hopefully this whole thing slides off um, and then we can take the old shifter out. But again, I have literally no idea. So we'll try that and see if it works. And uh, yeah, if not, we'll um, try again with something else, I guess. Okay, so we've got the old stock shifter out of the car and you can see it is, it is old, man. It is definitely, uh, definitely done its time. You can see some small surface rust and everything's just worn to pieces. For comparison, this is the old one. This is the new one. Uh, obviously it looks much, much different, but you can see the general shape looks to be pretty similar. The big difference is where it comes into the, uh, the bend. So you can see this one has like that really aggressive bend at the tip, whereas this, I'm so immature, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. This one has a pretty aggressive curve. This one doesn't. I don't know if that's better or not. I don't know, man. <laughs> but that's the general difference. They, they look very similar, but with some slight, slight differences. I still have no idea what these little spacer things are. Maybe they're counterweights. I Look, I don't know. I genuinely have no clue. There's also some new hardware here that we're going to put into the car because the old ones are just old and worn and filthy. But I'm definitely feeling much more confident about putting this new shifter in. So before I even worry about getting the new shifter into the old housing, I'm gonna do my best to clean whatever it is that's happening underneath that area, because it looks revolting. I don't think it's ever been cleaned, so I'm gonna try my best to clean it up, get it looking a little bit nicer. We may even uh, scrape out some of the old grease and replace it with some new grease that I have here. And uh, See if we can get this uh, on the car and working because yeah, I'm definitely definitely more comfortable now that I've taken the old one off. So I'm gonna go through, give it a clean and then we'll um, bring the new shifter in and see if we can get it working. Let's do it. Okay, so I've cleaned everything out as best as I possibly can and I have the new shifter here. So I'm just gonna chuck this shifter in, seat it in the, uh, the spot where the old one was going. If it fits, is it the same cup size? Let's have a look. I'm gonna grab the old shifter and see how big that uh, plastic cup is. Okay, so this is the old one. This is the new one. And you can see that the, uh, the plastic cups are actually way smaller. Let's see if I can pop this one off, the old shifter. Okay, so it turns out that the new plastic cups that come with the shifter are actually too big for the, uh, the original housing. So I've had to take the old ones off the old shifter. They're not in the best condition, but for the time being, so I can at least get it on the car, I'll use them and then I'll try and replace them later. So I've just got some general purpose Penrite uh, Molly grease. I'm gonna use that. I don't know if I'm supposed to. I don't know if it's the right one to use, but it's all I have and I think it's gonna be fine. So I hope I'm not wrong. So this is the new shifter ready to go. Let's uh, try and slot it in to the old housing. Hopefully it clicks in. Yes, it does. There we go, look at that, new shifter is in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this retaining clip that came off to hold the bottom section in. I'll put that on, see if we can uh, go from there, I guess. 
All right, there we go. So the bottom part is attached. So now when we go side to side, you can see that uh, it is already moving, ready to go. And already that kind of feels like it's a shorter position left to right. So what I'm gonna do is re-grease this mechanism that we took off that sits here. And this has the cup going into it. And then we have this attached to the link that changes through the, uh, the gear selector. So I'm gonna grease all that up, put it all back together, see if it works, and then see if we can make any adjustments to make the throw any more comfortable before uh, reassembling everything. So let's do it. So at the moment, I have this as a pretty loose fit. There's a couple of things missing. Nothing's really that tight. I just wanted to see what it was gonna look like and what it was gonna feel like. Just make sure everything works. Now, like I said, because we can adjust not only the counterweight, but where that bottom pivot part starts, we're gonna chuck the, uh, the shift knob on just as a really quick, brief look and we're going to do a little measurement just to see how much of a throw we have currently because I have a feeling that we're going to want to take this back apart drop this down even lower to get more of a uh, more of a pivot and see what it's like but again we won't know till we try so we're going to do a quick little basic measurement it's not going to be anywhere near as precise as what it was the first time let's chuck it up into third have a quick little hold I'll try and keep the tape measure as steady as absolutely possible all right we'll go from here all right so you can see that this one sits at about 11 centimeters so it was at 14 centimeters now it's at 11 centimeters so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it apart again drop that pivot point down by one and see if that makes it better or worse and uh, we'll go from there we're pretty much almost done let's uh let's do it All right, I've put everything back together after I adjusted the throw, so it all should be good. It's all tied down, it's all ready to go. All we have to do now is put on our counterweight, which sits around there. I'll tighten that on, and then it should be as simple as putting everything back together and uh, testing it out. I don't know how high up or low we should have this counterweight, but there's a little divot here that I'm gonna fit it to, so that should be good. I think that's how it's supposed to go. It definitely feels a hell of a lot nicer than it did before we changed the shifter, so hopefully it feels that good while we're driving. What I'm going to do now is put everything back together, chuck the seats back in, we'll do a measurement, and then we'll take it for a quick drive and uh, see if it made any difference. All right, the new shifter's on, everything's done up, everything's ready to go. Let's do some measurements and see if we made any improvement. All right, so we'll try and keep this as fair as possible. So we'll try and mimic what we did in the last test. So we'll put it in third gear, lift up the tape, align it with the console as best as possible. Okay, so this is sitting at zero. So we come down into neutral and that is only what, just under five and a half centimeters. So that's a massive difference already. And then we'll go down to fourth. So we're sitting at eight and a half centimeters. For reference, it used to be at 14. So the top of the shifter would sit at 14 centimeters. Now it's sitting at what? just underneath nine. So we'll call it eight and a half to be fair. So the throw now is so much shorter, so much shorter than it was before we uh, we put the short shifter on. But to go from a 14 centimeter throw to an eight and a half centimeter throw, that's almost half, almost half of the, uh, the distance traveled to get into gear. Very, very happy with that. Well, I guess the only thing left to do now is jump in the car, give it a bit of a test and see how it feels. I'm <laughs> very excited. All right, let's see how we go. Now, and this is definitely a cheaper shifter. There could be way better short shifters out there and like way more expensive versions of this. But for me, for a cheap car, a cheap shifter, oh, that feels good. It's just snappy. We're gonna go on a little bit of a, a straight here so we can at least cycle through some gears without worrying about uh, having to slow down a bunch. So we'll see what it's like. All right, let's see. Oh, that feels good. That's really snappy. It just, it clicks, it feels sturdy, it feels like you can trust it. That's really, really good. I, I've been wanting to do this one for a while and I've had it on my list for, for quite a bit, but like I said before, taking apart all of this stuff made me really, really nervous. I don't know why. I don't know why getting into the gear selector made me so, uh, so anxious, but this is well worth it. 
well worth it. Even if you're not taking this car to the track or, or whatever, for the sake of daily driving, it just feels so much nicer. It really, really does. All right, let's get this car back to the garage. We'll tidy up a bit and uh, be done for the day, dude. Let's go. So there you go. I am very, very happy with the way that turned out. And I'm super happy that I tried it. This was really off-putting for me. This was right on the edge of should I or shouldn't I. I've, I've put this off for quite a while because it made me nervous, but I'm happy that it's done. If you're looking to put a short shifter on your car, but you're nervous about diving in, I definitely suggest it. This whole thing cost me $50 Australian delivered to my house, and it just works. I did have to reuse the cups from the existing shifter, but everything else was perfect. It all comes with a kit. I still have no idea what these are, so I might have to do some research into what these are for, whether they're extra weights for the counterweight or if they're spaces of some description. Unfortunately, kits like this, when they are so cheap, don't come with instructions. Um, so it's sort of up to you to work out what they do. I didn't work out what they did, so once I find out if they're useful or not, I might take it apart again and add them. I have no idea, but we'll find out. But overall, I 100% recommend trying this out for yourself because it makes a massive difference to the feel of the car and it gives you the chance to just try something that might push you a little bit out of your comfort zone without it being end of the world if you mess it up. If you have a 2004 Lancer and you want the exact same shifter that I bought, I'll leave it in the description. You're welcome. If you guys like this video, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. Also subscribe. I post new videos every week. You don't want to miss them. If you want to pick up a sick shirt like this to support the channel, you can go to midnighttunecompany.com. I'll leave a link to that down below. We have a heap of different designs like this blackout mountain tee. Go and check them out. The link to the website's in the description or you can go to Instagram and look for Midnight Tune Co. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media. But other than that, I'm going to see you guys next week. I love your faces. Bye.